Hello everyone, I'm Miranda and thank you so much for watching my video. If you couldn't already tell from the poor video quality, I am very new to this. I'm just recording it on my phone. I have no idea how to edit videos or do anything fancy like that. So consider yourself warned. This is going to be a pretty terrible video. But if you're still here and you want to see how I use the Noteful app for digital planning, that's what I want to talk about today. So I figured I'd break this into a few shorter videos because if I try to cram everything into one, it'll be way too long and nobody wants to listen to me talk for that long. But I'm going to be comparing Noteful to GoodNotes here and there since I know that GoodNotes is kind of the go-to app for most digital planners. Um, but today I wanted to talk about my very favorite feature in Noteful and that's layers. Honestly, the layers feature alone should make you want to switch. Trust me, it is that good. This is my 2025 digital planner. I haven't even started setting it up yet. So I thought it would be the perfect blank canvas to kind of show you how I set up my layers and how I use them. Oh, and just so you know, um, this planner and all the stickers, pretty much everything I use comes from Breezy Organization. I love her shop. If you haven't checked it out yet, you should. It's it's seriously the best. She has great digital supplies. Um, so let's get started with this. Um, I think where I use my layers the most is in my weekly section. Well, I mean, I guess my weekly and my dailies. So I'm going to show you how I set up a weekly. So we're going to go into the first weekly in January. All right. So here's how it looks. This is the, um, the template, not the template, the... Oh my gosh, why am I blanking on this word? This is the setup. That's not the word I'm looking for, but we'll go with it. That it just comes with my planner. It's really cute. I love it. But sometimes I like to get a little more creative, add a little more color. So I want to cover this up and add my own um, layout to it. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool and I am just going to draw a square somewhere in the white section down here. So right away it pops up and asks me if I want to take a screenshot. I do. So I'm going to tap on that and then I can just tap add and it adds this white square. This is perfect because now I'm going to drag it up here and then I'm just going to pull it over and down just to cover up that layout that's already there. All right, perfect. And I want you to notice how easy that is to do in Noteful because I'm going to show you how you do it in GoodNotes now just so you can kind of compare the two. So let's go into good notes. So here's the same planner. I, if I can remember how to use, it's been a while since I used good notes. So I'm gonna go into the January weekly. So here we are, the same weekly. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cover up this um, layout that's already here. So I'm gonna grab my lasso tool and draw a square. So right away, nothing pops up or happens. So <laughs> you have to tap in the square, hit this little camera, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so now it's asking me if I wanna take a screenshot. So I have to hit this little arrow and then copy and then hold it down and paste it. There's just so many more steps to it. And I use screenshots a lot, so I appreciate the easier way you do it in Noteful. Also, maybe some people love this, I don't know, but I hate the resizing, the way you resize things in GoodNotes. Like, so it pulls from the middle, I guess. So when you're trying to resize it, it resizes the top and the bottom together and the sides together. I hate doing it this way because I just it's so much harder. So you have to kind of figure out where the middle is and then, I don't know, kind of, I don't know, try to get it to work. It takes me so much longer. I like just putting it to the side and then just stretching it out how big I like to the size I want it. Oh, then I accidentally... I don't even know what I just did. Well, you know what? It covered it, so we're gonna go with it. But it just, I don't know. I think this is so much more complicated. All right, but that looks pretty good. We're gonna go with it. So we've got the layout covered in both GoodNotes and Noteful. So let's go back to Noteful. The next thing I wanna do is add kind of a cute um, layout that I can use for my planning. I have some saved in the stickers tool. I hope you can see it. it's this little circle that kind of looks like a sticker that's peeling up. I wonder if I can get a little closer. I don't know if it'll focus on it, but it's right there. Eh, not great, but the stickers tool in Noteful is really similar to the elements tool in GoodNotes. It works exactly the same. 
So I'm gonna tap on that and I'm just gonna find a layout that I like to use. And these are all ones that I've already made. This one right here is my favorite. I use it a lot. Um, it's just a bunch of cute squares. So I'm gonna resize that and kind of fit it where I want it. All right, perfect. It's in a good spot. I like it there. I'm just gonna copy it because I don't think I have it saved in GoodNotes. So I'm gonna do the same thing in GoodNotes. Just gonna, oh, I always forget you have to hold down to paste in GoodNotes. So I'm gonna paste it in here. I'm gonna try to use their resizing thing to get it the size I want. Okay, perfect. I love where it is. That works perfectly. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to Noteful. So up to now, you're kind of thinking, this all works the same. It's, it, it, I don't see anything better about using NoteShelf, but we are gonna get into that. So now I wanna add some cute numbers to this. So again, I'm gonna to go to my stickers tool and I have these really cute clock numbers I use a lot. I got them from Breezy Organization. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of these clock numbers on here because I wanna use them to set up my days. Um, okay, so that's, I'll just do four of them. All right, so I'm gonna spread them out. Now, they are obviously too big to fit in my squares how I want them to fit, so I wanna resize them. So of course, I could do it all one at a time and resize them to the perfect size and then kind of put them together and try to get them all the same size, but that's really hard to do, and I'm not very good at making them all the same size. So it would be a ton easier if I could just resize them all together, right? So I'm gonna grab my lasso tool. So I can see in my lasso tool that I can turn some things off, like. I can turn off handwriting, I can turn off highlights, I can turn off text boxes, but I can't turn off the images and shapes because these are images that I want to resize. But unfortunately, this is also an image, this white square that we put on here earlier, and this is also an image. So if I try to lasso everything and resize it, you can see that it resizes everything. And I don't want to resize everything. I just want to resize these. But there's no way just to select them. Okay, so, and it's the same thing in GoodNotes. Let me pop into GoodNotes really quick and I'll just pull these numbers into GoodNotes. So, oops, okay. I'm just trying to use this as an example of how helpful the layers are. So, same thing in GoodNotes. I can go into the lasso tool. I can turn off handwriting, text boxes, equations, tape, comments, sticky notes, but that doesn't really help me because everything that I have on my screen right now is an image. So if I try to just lasso it, it's gonna select everything. So this is where the layers come in and they are amazing. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So right up here, you see these lines? If you tap on these lines, this takes you into your layers. It also has bookmarks and outlines, but I don't, I don't use them a lot, but I do use the layers a lot. So right now you can see that I just have one layer set up. I want to add another layer. So now I have two layers and it kind of just generically names them layer one and layer two. I like to rename them just so it makes it a little easier to use. So I'm going to rename this one. Sorry, I can't see very well. I'm gonna name it my editing layer. Oops. Okay, let's see if it takes it. Okay, so I'm gonna name that one my editing layer and then I want to rename this one my locked layer. And you can name them whatever you want, but this just helps keep it straight in my mind. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so now I have two layers. And I kind of recommend if you're new to layers, just start off kind of slow. Just start off with two layers. Honestly, I've been using layers for about a year now, and mostly I just use two layers. They Just having two layers always seems to work for me. Okay, so I want my editing layer to be on top though. So I'm going to just hold that and I'm going to drag it to the top. So now my editing layer is on top and my locked layer is on the bottom. So let me show you how I use it. Oh, and if you'll notice too, when I'm in the editing layer down here, do you see this little lock by it? I like to have that on because this layer, if, if they're both unlocked, it's like you're still kind of using one layer. They're all just open to be selected. And, and so, yeah, so it's still like using, oh, sorry, I'm so bad at explaining this stuff. So you wanna keep one locked unless you're going into it to change something. So I like to use that little lock and you can also, turn off the layer, like just hide it so you can't see it. But 
I don't know, that comes in handy if you kind of lost a sticker somewhere in your layers and you want to figure out where it is. But for the most part, leave them both on. Okay, so now we're going to organize this. So here I'm going to tap on this. This is that screenshot that I added at the very beginning. I have it right where I want it. I don't want it to move anymore. So I want to send it to that locked layer I just created. So I tapped on it and then here this little toolbar pops up. You're going to hit this over arrow and you're going to like tap on move to layer and I'm going to move it to the locked layer. Okay. So now you'll notice if I lasso it, I'm not picking it up. It's, it's on a different layer and it's locked so I cannot pick it up. So now I want to do the same thing to this, um, to these boxes that I just added. So I have them in place where I want them. I don't want them to move anymore. So I tapped on them. I'm going to tap this over arrow, move to layer, and I'm going to move them to the locked layer. So now if I lasso this, oh, only the number is getting picked up, right? There's nothing else. Like everything else is locked. It's on a different layer. So this is going to be really helpful now because now I can circle all of these numbers and I can kind of move it where I want it and just hit resize. Oops, helps if I don't have that right up there. So, okay, resize. And then I can just resize it. Like I can put this one where I want it and kind of look at how big I want it and resize all of them together. So now this is great because they're all the same size and now I can just move them to the blocks I want them. Oh my gosh, I see that this would be a very crazy week. I mean, <laughs> the numbers don't make sense because I'm not really setting up a weekly, but I just want to show you how this works. So, so it's so nice to do it this way. And also I love it because now if I'm looking at them and I'm like, oh, I don't know, I don't really like them on that side. I want to just move the numbers over to this side. I can just slide them over and I don't have to take my time one by one, kind of fitting them perfectly into place again and I don't know it's just it makes it so much easier I love it um and so in good notes there's just no way to do it I mean I have to just tap on these individually and resize them all individually and I don't know I'm terrible at that so I'm going to kind of do it really quick well maybe I don't even need to I mean oh also before I forget this is another thing that I love in Noteful so Say I'm resizing this number. Um, let me kind of actually, I'm going to make it bigger. And I accidentally kind of smash it in a little bit. And now, so now the proportions are off. I can drag it back out, but I kind of have to guess where, I don't know, the right size because I don't really know. In Noteful, let me go back into it. If I do that, because I don't know about you guys, but I do that all the time when I'm resizing them. I somehow drag it and stretch it out. So in Noteful, I hope you can see this. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So when I go to get it back to its normal shape, you can see there that it kind of clicks back into place. So let me show you that one more time. So if I accidentally stretch it out when I'm just pulling it back, it clicks. It like kind of snaps back into place. I love that so much. So, okay. And also just so you know, so I set up these two layers. So see, I have the editing layer and the locked layer. Those layers will be in your whole planner. So this whole document will have those same layers. So I think maybe this is a little confusing when people are starting to use layers. So if I go to my next week and I look at my layers, I can see that I have the same layers, editing and locked. There's nothing on them because I haven't added anything to the page yet, but they're the same layers. So it kind of makes sense when you're setting up your layers to set them up in a way that will be useful to use on every page you don't have to use them on every page. Like if I'm making this page and I'm just gonna use the layout that's already here, so I'm just gonna write on it really quick. I definitely, I don't have to use the layers at all, but they are here if I would, if I want to use them. But if I go through and I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna use the layers on this page and I just delete this layer, the locked layer, because I'm not gonna use it, it will delete it through the whole planner. So everything that you had in your locked layer will be deleted. So. So don't do that when you set up your layers, just, just leave them how they are. You can always add more, but just know that you'll be adding more layers to all of the pages. Doesn't mean you have to use all the layers on all the pages, but they are there. Um, so I think that covers layers. Oh, one other thing, just that's helpful when you're working with layers. So if these numbers, I got them all in the perfect place where I wanted them and I want to send them back to the locked layer, 
if I just circle them and send them back, let me show you. Move to layer, move to locked. And then I decide, you know what, I don't, I don't really want them there. I shouldn't have, I need to move them back over to this side. I can go into this locked layer and now I can edit the locked layer, but I'm gonna run into the same problem. Like when I go to circle the numbers, now everything on this layer is, it'll pick it all up. So that is not what I want it to do. So I'm gonna show you how I kind of fix that. See if I can go back. Okay, so they're back in the editing layer. So what I do, if there's something that I kind of want to keep together in a group, I circle them and then, and I don't think GoodNotes has this and I use it so much, I love it. So I have these all circled and I'm going to go up here where it says group and I'm going to group them. So see, it kind of puts them all together. So now when I move them, it's just going to move them all together. So now if I send this back to the locked layer, and then I decide, oh shoot, I wanted them over on the other side. I can go into my locked layer and I can still grab them. I'll just tap on them. And then they're, since I saved them as a group, I can pull them all over together as a group. So if there's numbers or little things like that, that you know you're gonna have, you're gonna, anyway, it's just it, grouping them really helps. Sorry, I'm so bad at explaining this. And you can always send things back to your editing layer. I mean, you can edit them here in this layer, but also if you want to send them back, you just tap on it and you do the same thing. Move to layer, move to editing layer. And then now these squares are back in my editing layer. And you'll notice when I did that, my numbers disappeared. That is because this editing layer is on top of the locked layer. So now those numbers are still on that bottom layer. So everything in this top layer is gonna show up on top. And then everything in the locked layer, the one beneath it is gonna show up behind whatever layers on top. Oh my gosh, I hope that makes sense. I'm explaining that super bad. Um, but even if I go to the editing layer, you can see I still can't see my numbers. So if that ever happens to you, you can just use this little eye feature to turn off that layer. So, so now, that layer is just hidden and I can see my numbers again. So I could reselect these and I can move them to the editing layer also. And then I can go back to my editing layer, turn it back on, and now there they are on the top. Um, you can also change um, just within the layer how you, like if you wanted these for some reason behind these boxes, just select them and then I could go to arrange and send to back. So you can definitely still arrange things um, within your layers. I hope that makes sense. I probably made this more confusing than it needed to be, <laughs> but hopefully it helped you out a little bit. Um, if you have any questions or there's something I didn't cover that you still don't understand, just put it in the comments. I know I'm not great at making videos, um, but you know what? Maybe I'll get better at it if I make enough of them. We'll see. Um, but again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.